So in this video, I'm going to show you how I took this picture from this to this. So the one great thing with uh, the Focus software is I can just drag a picture, drop it onto my desktop, and it'll just make a copy of my raw file. And then if I just go to my desktop, it should be sitting in there. There we go. And I should be able to just drag that and put it onto Photoshop and it should open in ACR. So cool, here it is in ACR and I'm just gonna run through my normal type of workflow. And the very first thing I do in my workflow is go to detail and get rid of all sharpening. My pictures don't need sharpening, I don't like sharpening. The next thing I normally do, and it's one thing you'll be really careful, the highlights and shadows warnings just do not work. The exposure I was happy with, otherwise I would have changed my exposure, so I'm leaving that as is. Contrast, I don't really like contrast in ACR, so I don't touch it. Highlights is normally the first thing, and I just wanna give myself a little bit of room on the skin on the highlights, so I will just pull a touch off the highlights just to give me more room to work and it also opens this area up a little bit for me shadows i'm normally filling in shadows just to make sure i've got good detail in my shadows to work with or to break in photoshop the whites the whites can pretty much stay where they are and the blacks that would might be how the finished picture is going to end up but no, I'm just going to leave the blacks where they are. When we come into texture, clarity, dehaze, all of those areas, I do want to force a little bit of what I can do with focus in a way of clarity and halos. Now, I'll be doing a bit of that in Photoshop. I'm just going to see what I can push this side first. So a dehaze, and normally I'll do it at this to see what it does overall, but then zoom in and see what damage I've caused. So if I bring a dehaze, which is gonna give me is like a localized contrasting. So that's way too far. And if we're doing color, look how badly it's color shifting that back wall. But that little bit of localized contrast is quite nice. So I am gonna pull a little bit of dehaze in there, which is also, you'll see it's sort of forcing that little bit of a halo more. So I'm just gonna pull that into about there. Now, with clarity, it's really hard. So you got to do, you, I do clarity in two different ways. I never go for clarity in ACR because it's going to look like that. Disgusting. But what I might do is just pull on a little bit, see how that halo is getting enforced now. But that's a little bit higher than where I want to take it. So I'm just going to use it just to help push my halo a little bit. So just that much. You see that little bit of a change? So I've taken it up to about plus 15. Now I'm going to zoom in 100% to her skin. Now it's slightly soft image, but I don't care about things like that because no model wants razor sharp skin. That is plenty sharp enough. I'd happy put this on a billboard. So I've got no problem with this. I am going to just see what happens when I pull my texture out. I'm looking at mainly the eyelashes. So you'll see that's with lots of texture. And I think... I reckon if I pull about seven, which is about half the clarity I've pulled in, just to take that sort of little edge off the clarity, and that picture is now not looking overly clarified like you do with butter. I'm going to pull that back a touch. It's just I'll just fine tune this a little bit. So that's looking about how I would like to work on it. Now, I can do my black and white here, or I can do it in Photoshop. I'm going to see what I can do here, and if I like it here, I'll just take it in to Photoshop in black and white. So I'm just going to click the black and white, and go down to my black and white mixer. And again, I normally just hit auto, and why I do that, I see if I like it better or worse. So I'm looking at what the auto's done, and deciding, is that a better place for me to start? And it, to me, it's a little bit better. I actually prefer what it did there to then build my picture off. Now, I know there's no purples, so I'm going to zero it. No magenta is really in that picture. Um, if I'm not sure, I will do that. And that's showing me what of that color's in there. So I like the idea of the blue. There must be a bit of blue in that wall. So I'm, I'm liking the idea because that's pushing my halo a bit more. So I'm going to leave the blue in there. Aqua. It's pretty much nothing. Anything that's nothing goes to zero. Greens, I don't think there's going to be much in that. So that's zero. Now, yellows, orange, and reds, they're the things. Orange is one of the biggest effects to the skin. Yellows are normally work 
more on highlights in hair and this picture it's really it's a little bit of her back in fact it's just cleaning up I'm just gonna leave it at zero it's really not doing anything the orange is where we're going to be able to get more of my green channel look and it may be green to blue channel so I'm actually liking that slightly a bit more darker tone on her cheeks and a little bit onto her back and the reds are going to basically use that to lighten her lips or darken her lips if you, a little bit on the skin it does bring if you look down that arm it does bring a little bit more of um, that highlight up the center so I'm pretty much happy with zero I'm not gonna actually play with it I like it as is that is about what I would normally do I'd normally then quickly just jump back into the basics area and then have a re-look at my highlights and shadows and just see yeah my highlights could come off a little bit more now um, my shadows are sitting about where I liked them the whites my whites I'm gonna bring up just a touch and I'll bring up my blacks just a touch to keep my detail. I can dark contrast up later on, but this has got me to how I want my image to look. So I can either save this off or I can just go open. Now the one thing with open, make sure what's written here is what you want. And if it isn't, just double click on that and it'll say, I want it to come out in Adobe RGB color space. I want a 16 bit. It's not going to give you the choice of TIFF or JPEG or whatever because that's the choice you'll get when you save it out of Photoshop. So I'm just going to accept where what it's going to do to the picture and hit open. Okay, now it's open in Photoshop and I'm just going to run my normal way of working with this. So I have an action set and when I hit my action set, it just throws these layers straight down. Now if I turn on and off these layers, you'll see they have not changed the picture at all. All it's done is laid some stuff ready for me to work on. So this is so this is just what I've laid out for the way I want to retouch and it's just so I don't have to go make new layer and all of that. The, the first layer, the healing layer, is just an empty new layer. Nothing special, it's just named healing. It's where I do my healing or cloning. The next two layers are my dodge and burn layers and I only like working in the mid-tones of these areas areas so it's just an up curve a down curve and it's got a black on the mask and i just paint white to bring that through the cutting layer is just a 128 parts red green and blue layer um, which gives you exactly halfway between black and white and this means it's set to a soft light blending mode which means it's now going to work as an overall dodge and burn so this is more local to the mids mid tones and this is a dodge and burn for the more global the whole picture my color fill layer is just if i'm doing convert to black and white tests and i don't need to because i'm already black and white on this the gradient map is a map that i use also to convert to black and white or add contrast and the gradient map just lives down in here and you'll see it's not a gradient fill layer so it's gradient map and it pretty much stretches the whole color between whatever two colors you do here when you click that button i have all the really in depth to this stuff on our inspire site this is just a quick retouch the very top layer is just a blank curve layer there's nothing happening on it i sometimes use this to help it easier with dodging and burning so i can see the areas and at the end of this I might have two or three of these which will go into creating that halo stronger so where I'm going to start is just down on the healing I don't like healing and cloning but sometimes we have to use them I normally prefer to heal than clone so I'll start start on healing they're just default settings nothing special that little crease line in the walls annoying me a little bit so I'm just gonna quickly just remove that little crease Boom. that little scratch in the wall only because it caught my eye that's the only reason I'm removing it caught my eye I can live with everything else on the back wall I'm then going to go in close on the skin the first thing I see which is annoying is this really cheaply made piece of crap dress we were using and I'm just going to fix this little tab and one of the quickest and easiest ways to do this if I come in here on the line select then I can line up where I want to See, it works really, really well for doing this stuff. So much better than Clone Tool. Because Clone Tool, Clone Tool, it's going to 
take on color especially if you're working in color it's going to take on the color of areas i'm just going to take that little bit out that'll do me zoom out yep so i'm now going to just come and clean up areas that are annoying me so i really don't want the crease so i'm just going to remove that crease and it's just going to do it with a heel and then some dodge and burn some people might leave it this is just a me taste i i find it's uh bringing the eye too much to the bum cheek and I, it's not really where i want people's eyes to go just a tiny little clean up of that so i'm just going to remove that little bit there and if you like the crease you could leave it in there but it's just a me thing i'm just going to dodge and burn some of this out afterwards so that's all i'm going to do down there um it's a little bit on the back i'm going to do i'm normally looking for things that are very small or very large so uh and white so um if it's like a soft thing like that sort of area there i can very easily do that with my dodging burning but to dodge and burn that hair out it's going to be a problem and this hair's bugging me a little bit and i try and do plenty of samples so we don't see a pattern appearing so i like to take plenty of just different selections and all of my retouching i uh, retouch it based on the picture is going to be blown up about two meters so I've got to be very careful about not leaving little circle halos caused by the soft edge of my brush. Again, I'm only looking at for little things that are very, very thin, very small, that are very dark or very light. Anything in the sort of mid-tones, my dodging and burning or fix. If I was doing just for uh, internet only, I could go so much heavier. I'd do a lot more than what I'm doing now but I just find that too much of my work ends up being big so it's easy just to retouch it the way I want it to start with I think that's pretty much it so let's so just zooming out to look at the image it's all right and so it's about the level I would go with my healing so now I'll go into my dodging burning so with my dodging burning I'm going to go and burn first I have a brush my settings on the brush is 100% opacity 1% flow 10 smoothness I just have it as soft and soft and feathered as I can get I never retouch higher than 1% flow so it, it takes a bit longer but it is so you will never see the work I've done on when I'm doing it so I'm just going to quickly dodge and burn up the blotchiness that i can see from afar so i start off without zooming in and just do it from a distance a lot of this stuff when i'm up close i can't actually see what's happening all of a sudden imperfections just disappear because again i want to be able to do this big enough to be blown up for two meters without anybody seeing my retouching i might just do down the bottom just down on her leg a bit i need to be a little bit closer on this and again all i'm doing is just taking some of this shading off so i'm just going to grab just the burn tool so i do zigzag a bit there's just a couple of little white blot lighter blotchy areas that are catching my eyes and i'm just cleaning them off and again you're really not going to see much change so I just zoomed out and you'll see just this bottom area now I'll do a, bit, a little bit more and I can show you before and after so with the zooming out when I zoom out I see new stuff that when you're in nice and close and just cleaning up a few quick little things you create other little problems and when you zoom out you can just see just I can just smooth out some of that shadowing, shadowing a little bit more so moving to the face so with the face i like to have it sort of nearly taking up my full working area about there's pretty good and again, with a lot of the stuff i do i don't want it to look retouched so i'm a bit careful about not making it too plastic fantastic but i'm pretty much just going to use my dodge tool on anything that is too dark and what i don't like and then my burn tool on anything that's too light and i want to sort of blend the mid-tones back to the rest and sometimes this feels like it takes a long time but you get pretty used to it and i can get normally a like a beck face normally takes me about three to four minutes other models if they've got a little bit more sort of pimples or wrinkles and things like that that might take me five to ten minutes but uh, again i still want to keep my picture always looking like 
you can't see the retouching so they say jet's good and clean it might be retouched or it mightn't be and one of the tricks by using the dodge and burn tool rather than things like frequency separation or some of those other horrible things it does take longer but uh, enables my work to be one minute is fine for Instagram, Facebook or the web and then when a client or someone rings me up and say hey we want to use that image for a campaign that we've got coming up I don't have to retouch it because it's already been retouched to be used at full size. For a little while I was when I was getting really busy any of my work that I was putting up I was basically being a little bit lazy and slack and retouching it just so it looked good on the web but then when I had to go back and retouch it to for someone to use say two meters on the front window of a hairdressing shop it was sort of like oh my god I've got to go right back to square one and do this and now it doesn't quite look the same so I just now treat every picture as a client that's going to be two meters higher on a window where people can walk right up to it and look at it carefully but I still want them to see skin so I'm really, really careful not to over retouch skin off. So let's zoom out and have a look at that. Now from a distance, I have caused a few little problems. I'm going to zoom in about halfway. I might just come in and one of my tricks on lips is just coming in with my burn tool and just force that line a bit stronger. It's normally towards the crease and lots of times there's this little bit of white in there. I just try and force that bottom edge a little bit sharper. I don't mind that white line that's there because that's quite common when you get that little white line. Some makeup artists actually put it in. I'm actually going to extend that white line a touch further and I'm just going to bring it just really subtly on the rest and I might just force that highlight through the middle a touch. This is just a, a tiny little thing I do a little bit just to enhance the lip shape a fraction without changing the actual uh, model's lips. So let's zoom out from there. Yeah, looking as a whole, I'm always going to see a little bit. So just down here caught my eye. It's a tiny bit of lighter there. I can't stop. It's just something that happens. I've got to force myself to stop. Yeah, I'm certain I'm happy with how that's come up. So that's what I call my base retouching. So that's just cleaning off all the things I want cleaned off. So now I'm looking at toning the final picture, which means the tonalities I want to have on Beck's skin and also the haloing and all of those type of things. Sometimes I go in and protect my blacks first by just coming up onto my cutting layer and doing work. Sometimes I'll do curves and then come back later on and do it. Let's break it and get a halo. Then I'll come back in and highlight areas that might, might have been damaged with a halo. So with a gradient map, I need to have foreground black and background white. For this, uh, because I'm not going to use full power of it, I'm just going to leave it from 0 to 255, black and white. If I just come down here and then select gradient map, it's going to create a new layer with going from black to white. And you'll see if I turn that on and off, it's put this really linear contrast over the whole picture. Now that's a bit too strong for this picture. Then I can just bring down my opacity till I get it to where I like it. Right. And 43 looks about fine. But I'm going to just dump that layer because I've already got my own gradient map layer. And I'm going to do the gradient map later, not right from the start. It's also a really good way to turn a color picture black and white. Because it doesn't change the luminosity of a blue over a yellow. It'll keep whatever which is brighter will stay the brighter. Into here now, I am now going to do my toning a bit of back, but also forcing my halo a little bit stronger. This is why I like using focus. I don't have to do all these layers. So this is now anything I shoot on a Sony or in a non Hasselblad or any Hasselblad file, I don't put through focus. This is the work I have to do to get my haloing effect. So with this, I'm just going to bring down right from the middle, just bring down that curve until I get the toning on the shading of her skin. Now this is I already know my style, so I know what I'm looking at. I can't teach you how my eyes work, but I'm just bringing it into where I want it, which is about there. Now onto that mask, I'm going to just use my brush tool, and my brush tool is going to now be black, which it, which it is, 
and it's still gonna be 1% flow. So what I'm gonna do now is just paint out where I don't want that down curve. So I don't want to create a halo too. So I'm going to be doing a couple of things at the same time. First couple of things, I do want to force center lines down things like arms, get the highlights to where I want the highlights to appear. I'm going to just, this is a really nice bit of material and I'm just going to get Beck's bum cheeks to stick out a bit longer and then force just the highlight a little bit stronger down the center of her leg. I'm going to definitely make sure that I'm not blacking off any of the hair. So I'm going to spend a fair bit of time on the hair. You'll see my brush strokes. I'm doing my haloing now and bringing parts of her body up where I want it brighter and the areas I don't. See, I'm not going through the back because I don't really want to work, work her back stronger. I'll just get this working a bit. Then I can do it on and off of the layers so you can see the effect this is having. Now with a 1% flow brush means I'm going to get a really soft edge to this. So if I just turn on and off that layer now, see how it's just forcing that halo better. So I still can, I still got room to bring a bit more lightness in around here. So I'm going to just work so I can get that halo stronger. And yes, it's at 1% flow. It takes a little while, but as soon as you go 2 or 3% flow, you'll start to see where your brush strokes are finishing and starting so i'll do a before and after so there's a before and there's my after so you can see that halo is now punched in more we've got a little bit more toning on her skin i might just throw well, i don't think i really need to throw it that's enough halo for me now i'm just going to jump in with my cutting layer now remember i said this now will dodge and burn from white to black so with the white brush i'm just going to come into the really darker shadow areas just a little bit i'm still at one percent flow just to pop the detail in the darkest parts of the hair and this is how we can get that really nice black on black i'm just going to do a couple of strokes down the arm and yeah I'm just going to enhance that cheek and again a little bit on the lines down her legs a little bit just to make them a bit stronger get a little bit of a better line happening down there so not lots of strokes maybe a tiny bit more light in the middle of her forehead to make her face rounder just, just so we've got that nice curving in the thing if I now turn on my, on and off my cutting tool You'll see, look at the little, pop, see how that pops everything that bit more? That's a fraction too strong, so I'm just going to bring my opacity down a little bit and then turn it on and off. That's much nicer. Now, if I have lost a tiny bit of the shading around the bum area, so if I swap from a white brush to a black brush, I'm just going to put that little bit of shading in there just to make it better. Yeah, I'm liking that. Maybe a little bit on the arms just to get that curving. Put a tiny bit on the cheekbone and jaw. And that photo is pretty close to finish, except now I can look at what localized contrast I'm going to do. So if I do that, that's some people might like it. To me, it's way too strong. So I'm just going to bring my opacity back to zero then bring it up a little bit that's it so i'm only at 13 percent and that's just given it a really really nice push in to there i just want to check out my detail on basically all i'm just looking at they've got nice detail still in my blacks so i haven't lost my blacks everything's looking really nice i've just zoomed out again full size that's pretty much the picture done now so if i do the complete before and after there was before there was after so i've kept the essence of the picture i've pushed my halo stronger the model's going to be happy because it's been cleaned up for how they like it and that's about it i'll just save it off to whatever ways i want to save off so when i do a save off i'll just save this off now as a tiff and you'll notice i haven't done any sharpening i haven't done any cropping my tiff file will be saved with all its layers no sharpening no crop then at a later point i can crop to whatever and then i can sharpen for what it's going to be used so if it's going to go to a billboard it's going to be desharpened a little bit if it's going to go to a a print it might be sharpened a fraction to make up for what gets destroyed during the printing process i hope you enjoyed this there's a link coming up now to the shoot that this was taken from